Well, it's beginning in 86 in October 22nd, I believe it was. Um, Lila and I were sitting at the kitchen table having breakfast. When I heard Ike, our dog, started barking and carrying on, so I went out to look and I didn't see anything right away. Then I looked over in the direction over there, over that way, and the morning sun had come up. And I could see these big antlers, the sun was glittering off of it. It was going like a big antenna, TV antenna. I said, holy mackerel, first time I ever see a moose up here. Well, I see a moose up to the pond, but not in here at the farm. So I called Lila. I said, look at all the air. And uh, the thing was here, I'd call my daughter up in Maine and call my kids around town about it. But I didn't think nothing of it until about three, three days later when someone called me from the Rutland Herald. He says, uh, see, you got a little disturbance up there. I said, what are you talking about? He says, there's a moose up there hanging around? I says, yeah. But I says, you know, he could be gone. If you were coming up here, he could be gone by then. And, uh, but as it was, um, he stayed here for 76 days. In the morning, I mean, in the evening, he'd take off. You head up the mountain or over, you, know, you never knew where he was going. But in the morning of, after daylight come and the sun was coming up, he'd appear here at the, in the pasture with uh, Jessica. I had two other cows in there with her. But I think why he got attached to her is because I'd moved them over to this side because they were in heat. And I wanted to get them away from my bull over here, so I put them on that side. And that's how he got attracted, I believe, to the, he picked out Jessica, because he's the best looking one, I guess. And uh, then as the story went, it, uh, people started coming. And they kept coming and coming and coming. Then people says, what do you got to celebrate this? I said, what are you talking about? Well, you should be selling stuff. I said, what do you mean selling stuff? T-shirts. Oh, I said, well, I said, I never thought about that. So I uh, called a friend of mine who's in the T-shirt business. And... Uh, he came right up and he took things over. He, took, he brought up an artist, he drew up a, a picture, and we started making t shirts. Um, after a while, we were so busy with t shirts, he couldn't supply, get the stuff here quick enough. So I had. I think three or four other companies that were making them too. At the time, I was the largest t-shirt dealer in New England. Um, I was the largest tourist attraction in New England. Uh, we had upwards of 100,000 people came up here. Uh, both sides of roads were cars up and down all the way down to bomb the hill up the top of the hill a few people got irritated you know because of the traffic but um, uh, my boys they did directed traffic and stuff like that if there was any problems they jumped on it and uh, matter of fact when the whole thing was all over the state police came and asked told me said you know, Larry, of all the people that were up here, we never had any uh, uh, problems. I, see, I said, well, my boys and my friends, they try to keep things moving all the time. And I said, I thought they did a good job. Um, 
then the next thing I know, uh, up comes the lim limousines and all that. And they're taking us to the big TV stations down in New York City. And I've been on every major network, uh, television. We uh, had a great time uh, doing it, Lila and I. And, uh, what, what TV stations did you go to? Well, gee, I was on Good Morning America two or three different times. Uh, it's on Channel 22, on our local channel here, 3. It's on all of them. They wrote me up in Life Magazine. Yankee Magazine, uh, Look, or whatever it was, I don't know, and all, all the big magazines. So, describe what you saw with the relationship with the moose and the cow. Like, what, what did you see? Like, Well, you know, he, he always hung around with her. He, whenever she stopped, he's always there with his head draped over her back, and and uh, I know people ask me, he said, do you think uh, your cow was really in love with that moose? I says, well, the only thing I can tell you, after, she le after the moose left, she never went with another one. Then other people says, well, in the end, if they were such a love affair, why do you think he left? I said, well, the only thing I can tell you there, it's a natural phenomenon, he lost his antlers. When he lost his antlers, he lost all his musculinity, so <laughs> he left town. When he shed his antlers, my nephew found one here at the bottom of the hill, and uh, the fishing game officer, he tracked the moose when it left, and it went up that way, and he found the other antler. So I have both antlers in my possession. Then when they, uh, one interesting thing is when I, my first television show that I did with ABC, Good Morning America. I get down there and they hook me up with all these wires and, you know, and these microphones were behind, you know, you couldn't see them behind my head, but I could hear. And uh, we had the director, he'd say, when you see, when you hear this signal here, this is the director telling you to look this way and that way and so on and so forth. We got through all of that and then, uh, he said, one thing though, he said, uh, Larry, he says, uh, I know that, uh, you know, you live way in the, up in the hills of Shrewsbury, Vermont. This is a family daytime show. I said, yeah. He says, so you got to watch, you know, your language. I said, oh yeah, I understand that. So, Spencer Cr Christian, he was the one who was interviewing me. Him and Joan London. He asked me how the affair was going. I said, well, he was very amorous against her. And he looked at me wondering, where the hell did he come up with this word? <laughs> and and uh, so we got through all the TV shows real good. And then, you know, uh, I remember one day, out here and got a big crowd going <clears throat> and I used to get in front of them and ex talk to the people about the different things and then I'd mingle it was just one guy <clears throat> he's got a whole mess of cameras and he's, he's telling the people boy what a stupid moose you know you don't
don't know what the hell's the difference between another moose and a cow and all that. What a, what a dummy. <clears throat> so I kind of edged my way up to him. I says, how you doing? He says, good. And how you like this show? He says, boy, I never see such a stupid animal. I said, is that right? I says, uh, you live here in Vermont? He said, no. I said, you got family here? That owns property around here or something? He says, no. I said, where are you from? He said, just outside of Boston. I said, oh, you're up here on vacation. He said, no, I see this on television. So I came up here. Oh, I wonder who the dumb one is, the moose or you? And he turned around, looked at me, and he walked off. I said, you know, he didn't, the moose didn't come to see you. You came to see him. And uh, we had a lot of incidents of different people, and a lot of people were uh, very, very happy that, well, I had a company that came in, and uh, they wanted to put plywood walls up and me charge people. I said, no, are you kidding? This is a natural phenomenon here in Vermont. And I said, here's a chance for all Vermonters and other people can view the largest animal that we have, the land animal that we have in Vermont. And uh, I said, I'm going to share it with them. Well, you're selling. I said, yeah, I'm selling stuff. Yeah. But that's nothing to do with me putting up a, a wall and charging people to come in here. And uh, So things went on there <clears throat> quite a bit. The game warden, we had a lot of incidents where uh, people called and said, boy, Larry, you think you're awful famous with that moose. You want to see how famous I'm going to be when I come up here and I'm going to shoot it. I said, you're welcome to come up here. But the only other thing, I hope you're a better shot than I am. Because <laughs> I said, with the notoriety that I have today, and you was to attempt to shoot this moose, and I shot you, I'd probably get away with it. <laughs> and um, then we had uh, we had a few incidents here. One time, uh, I had this, I don't know whether, he, if he belonged to a motorcycle gang or what, but he was, got all these cut off sleeves on him, thing he got patches on and all of that. <clears throat> and uh, the moose was up here in the meadow and uh, he was laying down up there by himself. Well, uh, a few crowds, you know, people coming in, they want to take pictures. I said, look, it, here's what I'll do. I'll take groups, three or four at a time, and go up as far as I, I think it's safe, and you can take pictures. And so they, everybody agreed. They were all happy over it. And then I looked, and I see this guy going over the backside, and he's going in. So I hollered, hey, pal. I says, uh, you want to go back out to the road? And, back off before you disturb that moose and he keeps going over and he's thinking, I said hey pal didn't you hear me I said move it so he turned around he came down he says my name is not pal I said well I'll tell you what pal I own this land I want you off it so he goes like this here and he's got a big knife on his sheath on the side, you know. I said, boy, here's another dummy. He looked at me and says, why? Because I reached in my thing and I had a 357 Magnum. I said, I once seen a movie that said something about you shouldn't take a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> so he said, I said, well, what do you want? I said, I want you to leave. So he, he did. He left. So Take me like you, uh, 
early on when the moose first showed up. What were you, can you take me through kind of your interactions of what you and Lila saw and your relationship with the moose and the cow early on? Like what what you uh, what was your experience like? Well, uh, I know when he came, you know, he, he was on that side of the road. Then he came on this side with the other uh, other animals. And uh, I didn't have no, I had some sort of makeshift fence. But I put up this flagon tape, you know, to keep people back. I didn't want them down there any further, so I put up this flag and tape around. And uh, that moose would not cross that flag and tape. He'd come up to it, and he'd stand there and stand there and stand there. And a lot of times, like in the evening, I knew he wanted to take off. So I would uh, go over and I'd break the tape and let it go, and then he'd walk over. He'd cross it. Otherwise, he wouldn't cross it. Um, I remember one day uh, uh, a photographer from, uh, and a writer from uh, the Associated Press he came and uh, the moose was down back here and he asked me uh, could I go over here and set up my camera I says well I don't normally let Oh, the kids are over there? Yeah. Um, I said, I don't normally uh, let anybody across. He says, I understand. He said, but I'm with the Associated Press, and I take all responsibilities. I said, okay, as long as you, I want to know you. You're on your own, you and your equipment, because he had some, he had, he had lenses on his camera like this. And uh, I said, I don't want to be responsible. He said, no, I understand that. So he went out there. And he's taking pictures of it over in there. And then I guess the moose spotted him out there. He looked at him around. Well, nobody's supposed to be in here in my territory. So he comes over. And as he's getting closer and closer, he started running. So Toby took off. writer, photographer, he run like heck and got on this side of the fence and he left his camera there. The moose came up and he's looking, he's looking in the camera like this and he keeps looking and looking right up close and, looking, and he said, oh my God, if I only had a remote on that camera. <laughs> but, but, you know, the moose never, I thought for sure he was going to destroy that thing, that camera, but he just, after a while, he was satisfied with whatever he was looking at, and he wandered off. Huh. And then the photographer went out and got his camp equipment, he said. But then, uh, uh, what other incidents, incidents we had? Uh, uh, I know, like, the, the last part, uh, fishing game used to park their truck out back here and stay here, to stay all night, and watch it. Things around here. Be, um, it was quite an ordeal. Uh, uh, I remember Lila. She had the living room in there. It was all full of people. I said, what are them people doing? I was outside. Said, what are them people? Oh, she said, them people are them people are all cold from being outside. So I had them come in. I made them all tea and everything. I said, holy mackerel. She got the whole thing in there. As busy as they were, selling t-shirts and all that shit. It's all right. In there, here she is making tea for everybody. That's funny. So, like when you, know, you got up in the morning and went out, and, you know, what was your routine with them? Walk me through what your routine was with the moose there, and you know, oh. before all the people showed up. Like. Yeah, 
he'd, uh, like I say, he'd come from up on a hill, and you never know where he was coming from. I didn't know until I see him. And I remember one guy, and uh, later on we became very close friends, him and his wife, they were from Kansas. His wife came in the house, and he was out in the truck. And so I said, no, there's no other people here. So I went up to him. I said, how you doing? Good. I said, what do you think about, what do you think about this moose deal? He said, I think you raised that thing out in the barn here. I said, oh yeah? Well, I can tell you one thing, it's not true. But I, so I said, well, I got other things to do. I can't stay here talking all day, so. I was going about throwing stuff out to the cows and this and that, my animals I had out here. In the meantime, the moose came down from up that way and he walked up and he came up behind the guy's pickup and he's sitting in there like this. All of a sudden, the moose almost stuck his head in the guy's pickup truck and he said, oh my God. <laughs> And he, he took and walked away. So I said to the guy afterwards, I said, I thought you said I, I raised that thing. You see how, well, he said, that really surprised me. He said, this seems like a real, the real deal. I said, yeah, I'm telling you. It's just, he just happened to come and fall over there uh, with my cow and uh, that's it. Uh, some, I said, the game, fishing game told me that he was a younger moose, you know, and uh, what happened was the mother pushes them out of the herd when she's ready to have another another calf. Pushes him out. He has to go on his own, man. <clears throat> and he just wandered around to me, ran into my cow here, and started an affair with her. Can you describe what he looked like? Well, he was, his shoulders were up, up to my head when I stood there. I see you got up close to him? Oh, well, he used to come to the fence at night when everybody was left. Uh, I'd talk to him, he'd come over to me, and uh, he'd reach out like this here. And I knew he wanted me to pet him or something. I, you know, that's what I, but I said, I thought about it, but then I said, no, if I touch him, I'll be taking the last bit of wildness from him. So far, nobody's ever touched him. So as much as I wanted to touch him and pet him, I didn't, I just talked to him. And he'd go, <laughs> When I talked to him, you know. And, uh, What'd you talk to him about? Oh, different thing. How's it, how'd your day go? And did you see all them people that were here? And different things, you know. People think I was crazy if I if they came upon me to see him talking to that guy, yeah. talking to the most. But. <laughs> then uh, I don't know if I can say this one here or not, but I said it on television. I said, I had a bunch of uh, kid, a whole crowd of people over here then. It must have been a hundred people or more. And I'm telling them about the different things about the moose and the cow and this and this and that. And uh, then uh, the moose was getting kind of amorous. She's trying to jump Jessica. And these two little kids come up. One of them turned around and he says, Wow, look at the wanger on that thing. <laughs> and the whole crowd started laughing. They got in a big uproar over that. Then people started asking me, he says, uh, you think it's possible that they, he could mate her and uh, they'd have a calf? I said, no. The chromosomes are different and uh, it would never happen. And, and uh, they said, Boy, too bad it wouldn't. I said, yeah, then you'd really have a show going on here. I said, yeah, well, I'm satisfied the way things are today. <clears throat> then, uh, then one day I remember, uh, this uh, 
hospital for kids. For what it was, I don't know how, how it came about, but they called me and said, would it be all right if I brought up a, a group of children, you know, autistic children and things? I said, certainly. So they brought them up. And uh, I remember this one little guy, he'd come off that bus and he was on crutches. Little guy, probably seven, eight years old, if even that. And uh, he was so excited to get going. He stumbled and he fell right in the road there. I went over and other people went up. No, he was, he was down and up before we could even get to him. He was so excited about coming to see that moose. I said, look at that. That's something. And I said, this is one of the the highlights really uh, that I enjoyed of all the people that come to see I said I'm so glad I told that bus driver and the teacher I'm so glad you brought these children up here because they enjoyed that thing so much and, uh, so you got a little bit of a relationship with a moose to some degree would you say yeah yeah over the time yeah That's pretty cool. Well, like I said, when you see, I said, no, I, I, yeah, I feel bad he's gone when he left. But I said, hey, that's nature. And I said, I said, I, um, I was fortunate that he, he, he chose this place to come down over any place in the whole state of Vermont. He came here. Yeah, he had, uh, one antler that was turned down. When he was younger, he must have got went rubbing or, or he got in a fight or something and they made it a downtime. So that made it different than any other moose around. That's why I could uh, uh, do what I did with it. Um, I knew for a while fish and game in the beginning it had attracted so many people, they figured somebody was going to get hurt. And uh, I went to my local uh, legislature, who I knew very well, and I said, what can you do for me? And he says, I said, uh, here's the largest animal, land animal we have in Vermont, and people are able to come here and view it. I said, not only, you know, everybody said, I'm making money. But, you know, people are coming from everywhere. They're going into the local restaurants. They're buying gasoline. I imagine some are going into motels. They're buying this and buying that while they're here. I said, I think it's not only, it's, you know, it's me, uh, it's good for the economy, which was happening. And he says, I, you're, you're right, you hit that right on the head, he says. So I'm going to fight for you. Uh, so you can keep this moose here instead of them trying to take it away, you know. Yeah. And uh, but they did tell me if we have one incident, we can't take any chances. We'll have to get rid of it, you know, take it off. Or yeah. I said, okay, fair deal. As long as he don't cause any trouble, he's welcome here as long as he wants to stay here. Can you do me a favor and describe before, like, describe what, at that time, what life was like right around here on the farm, like what you were doing for the farm and like, you know, just kind of set the stage of what was Larry Carrera doing up here uh, in Shrewsbury at that time, you know? Just... Well, at that time I was working, I had a small farm here, what I call, you know. I had horses and donkeys, and I had uh, cows, and you know. I also worked at GE, and I just did this as a hobby, because you know I, I was brought up on this farm more or less. And, uh, it's part of me, you know, animals, and. Uh, So we had all these uh, these animals here, and I, uh, like I say, I enjoyed it. I worked at GE, 
And now I was, you know, that was the deal. I uh, working at GE, they gave me a leave of absence because of the amount of people on the, encroaching on the land and everything. I had to be here to protect it and stuff. So they gave me, uh, I think, three months leave of absence. Uh, I didn't get paid. A lot of the guys were very jealous, you know. They, oh, yeah, you got it there, you're getting paid and all that. You're making, a, I, no, I didn't get paid. They, uh, I had to pay my own insurance while I was out and everything. You know what I mean? But, uh, One thing is, I uh, I made it a point. I wore a GE hat all the time. You know, figured, hey, they were good to me. Why not be good back to them? So I wore that GE hat. And uh, all in all, after the uh, thing was over, I returned back to work, and I got a call corporate headquarters in Fairfield, Connecticut. And uh, they want to know if they could send up a, a reporter, photographer, and interview me. They wanted to put me in uh, corporate paper. I wasn't going to be in the employees thing. I was going to be in the big, big paper, you know, so... Uh, after everybody figured uh, 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 they found out I wasn't getting paid, a lot of them were upset because they thought I was getting paid. Yeah. But, uh, you know, from GE. But uh, that wasn't the case. And I emphasized that when they, when they interviewed me because somebody asked me that. And I said, no, I, GE does not pay me. They were very good about letting me have a leave of absence. And, uh, but, uh, I had to pay my own insurance, like I said. So, tell me about how this song came about. Uh, I don't know, one day I got a, a call from, uh, Sarah Young, I think that's what it is. That's how long ago I looked at that. She said, Larry, uh, I wrote a song about the moose and all that, and uh, they told me the whole thing, and I said, yeah. She says, I'm going to send you a copy of it. I said, okay, thank you. And then after I played it, I says, uh, I'd like to have, uh, can I buy more of these here? So I can, oh, you can have all you want. We'll sell you all, and, you know. So I said, well, Send me a few cases up here, and we'll start off. I sold a lot of them. Uh, I took some of them to the local uh, radio stations. And they played it all the time. And, uh, then I, uh, <clears throat> I used to take T-shirts down to the radio station. The DJs used to. Ask these questions about the Musa. And if a certain caller came in, I don't know how they did it, but they gave away t shirts to the winners, and, which was good. Then another one, I said, one thing that <clears throat> you look forward to would never happen. I said, yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, all my years of watching TV, I thought for sure Charles Corolt would have been up here. Because <laughs> he used to travel all around the United States in that bus to all the uh, big happenings. I said, I expected him any day, but he never did show up. But uh, So how about like towards the end there and what, what happened when the moose left? Like, or what was the situation with the moose leaving and everything? Well, after he left, uh, 
Things calm down a, quite a bit, yeah. And, uh, Describe a, like, did you, like, you went out one morning and, you know, whatever, what was the situation you saw well, when... Well, I, I had a return to work, I think, on January 6th or something, like a third, or, I don't know, I can't remember now. But I did tell Lila, I says, the moose is leaving tomorrow. When I go to work, that moose is leaving. She's, how do you know? I said, because he's sleeping right underneath our window out here, in our bedroom out here. And he never did that before. And sure enough, the next morning, uh, Lila called me because I was at work. She says, she called me, she says, Larry, I think the moose is gone. He's headed out. And he headed up that way. And he went across and uh, I talked to kids, you know, because uh, I had my store. I, later on, I talked to kids, and I says, I would have liked to seen him one more last time before he left. And uh, the kid says, no, Larry, you wouldn't want to see him. He looked so sad that his antlers were gone. He says, he walked in front of the school bus and went up that mountain right there, Saddle Mountain. And the kids, the way they explained it is, oh, he would look so sad. I know you wouldn't want to see him looking like that. Yeah, that's quite a deal. And the kids told me that. You know, one thing is recognition. Uh, Lila and I were going up to Maine, up to our daughters, and we stopped at a restaurant over in Dover, New Hampshire. We, whenever we go up that way, we always stop there. It's a seafood place, and uh, we were in there. Pretty soon, a guy they're looking. He's talking with his wife, and they're pointing over there, and I'm saying, "What the heck's going on?" And so uh, Bonnie came over to me, and he says. Uh, you're that guy with the moose up there in Vermont, aren't you? I says, yeah, why? And he, now I hadn't seen it yet. He had the Yankee magazine with that article he wrote up about me. And uh, he, that was the first time I see it. He had the copy of it. I said, well, I, said, I never realized it was out yet and all that. Nobody had known him yet. I said, yeah. Pretty neat. He said, I'm one of the first ones that's going to get you. I said, yeah. <laughs> you still have copies of all that old stuff? Yeah, I still got my Yankee magazine and things. And, uh, yeah, we got some of the old, I, I got a box, a big wooden box. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's letters from everybody around the whole world. Really? From around the world. Uh, matter of fact, uh, when the moose was here, uh, I I didn't get very much sleep, even at night, because I at nighttime, very late at night, I used to do interviews across. I forgot what countries they were, and uh, gave them updates on the moose and all that. And uh, what's his name? Call me uh, every single every single evening. He called me, Paul Harvey. Want to know up the update on what's going on? And uh, I listen to him in the morning. And he's talking about the moose, and he's saying that's not the end of the story. Because <laughs> the next day I'd. He'd call me again and get another interview. Wow. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and it was pretty neat, you know, after a while, you know, people recognize you. You're going down the street and, hey, hey, moose man, no, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so did you ever read any of those letters? Oh yeah, I read them all. 
got a whole thing. I think I'm going to give them the Historical Society, yeah. I guess. Because I got oh, a lot of them. I know the kids, what, what, what are they going to do with them? I don't even know what the Historical Society do with them. But. <laughs>